Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Popper and the prices that have been going up a ton due to it. So it is very interesting. Popper is a format where you have cards that are commons and these cards have been spiking up a ton in price. Gus is $6. Ask Barons, which I guess is quote a common, is $8.50. Utopia is $4, Ranger is $2.58, Circular Logic, which was downgraded to a common, is 5 bucks. You have a lot of support from the biggest YouTuber, Tolarian Community College, to hype up this format. And ironically, the whole point of this format is to be cheap. And something like Ask Barons, which is printed in, I believe that's a commander deck of some type, is eight bucks, and something like Gus, which was printed a long time ago in Makati Mask, it was also reprinted in Jace First Chandra, but that was a long time ago too, is six bucks. Utopia, which I have a ton of those, is four bucks, and Tortured Existence, which was recently featured on a video by Tolarian, is almost 70 cents, which for it is very good. So we're going to take a look at some of the, well, I guess we're going to talk about the effect of large YouTubers on this marketplace. It is very, very, very noticeable. So whenever, I mean, it makes sense, right? If you make a video, 100,000 people watch it, or you have 300,000 people, and let's say 100,000 people watch it, then they're going to all want to make the same deck as was in the video. Now, that will cause the stock to dry up very quickly due to all these people buying four copies of... I mean, I would believe they're probably going to buy the whole deck, if possible, from the same vendor. That's how I would do it. I wouldn't buy different copies from different vendors. As a speculation, it's very intriguing to talk about. Very, very intriguing to talk about because you're talking about speculating on commons. I couldn't imagine that doing that. Like I, I just, in all of the MTG finance history I have, I just don't imagine doing that ever. Speculating on commons. Uh, but here we are, we're speculating on commons now. And they're not even like super like modern commons, right? Like uh, let's say that you were speculated on Gitaxian Pro being on band. That's kind of interesting. If you speculated on Ponder being on ban. Kind of interesting, but we're talking about commons that only played in one format, Popper. So like Standard Bearer, which hit $10 recently, that card isn't a modern card. It's not even Playboy Moderns from Apocalypse. And that card, wait, hold on, is Apocalypse Playboy Modern? No, I don't think so, right? But yeah, I mean, the only reason that card is worth any money at all is because of Popper. And I say, let's ride out the popper band. Let's ride it out. Like that's the key from MTG Finance. It changes so much every single year. And instead of like doing, there's a real opportunity here. I see the opportunity in bulk. For instance, Devoted Druid, I found a bunch of them in bulk. I found like 40 of them in bulk recently. And that's quote, $200, end quote. Sleight of hand is a lot of money. Gus is $4. Like, Wow, I mean, you look at this stuff and Rhystic Study, I mean, everyone knows that's a $10 card, but it needs a reprint. It's high risk. It, the risk is incredibly high because these are commons that can be reprinted in literally anything. Like, they could be reprinted in a standard set. They can be reprinted in a Modern Masters uh, 25th anniversary set. They can be reprinted in a Commander deck. These are not on the reserve list, and they're not, a lot of these are not like old enough. I mean, when I look at Gus, that kind of stands out to me as a really old one. But something like Lotus Petal, Tempest, kind of old. But it not definitely not uh, Alpha Beta or Collector's Item old. These are not Collector's Items, I believe. I think these cards are just the price because of playability in one format, Popper. I mean, obviously you have uh, EDH. These are also very good in EDH. And the Wraith, the Street Wraith is very good in Modern. 
So there is other utility used for them, but these cards are mainly used for popper. Sleight of Hand is a $4 card. Lava Spike is a $4 card. I remember Lava Spike being like $0.25 cents when it got reprinted in Modern Masters 1, and now it's $25. Bucks. Or it's ah, $4 again. So you have uh, Chromatic Star, which is good. All the lands, the artifact lands. I mean, think about this. This is banned. These lands are banned in Modern, and they are playable in Popper. Sleight of Hand is a free dollar card. I mean, yeah, I'll, both Sleight of Hands is free, almost $4. Spreading Seas from Zendikar, which wasn't that long ago, is $2.89. So truly, you're talking about a ton of value sitting in the bulk bins. Like, I would not at all be surprised if you could find these at the bulk bins. And if you know what to look for, like, let's say the Sleight of Hand, I think that's... Eighth edition or something like that, you know what to look for, and that makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of many copies. So if you find one sleight of hand, it is very likely you're going to find a bunch, and that is my experience with bulk. These cards, if you buy it from an older player, there's no way an older player is going to be like, hmm, sleight of hand, four bucks. They cannot draw that conclusion. I cannot draw that conclusion. I'm still having trouble understanding that right now. And I'm looking at the price right now, and I have tons of these cards. And yeah, pretty uh, interesting. Really, really, really interesting topic to talk about right now is where the magic is going as a collection item. So Net Nettle Sentinel reprinted recently. I think it's reprinted recently. Ancient uh, Expedition Map, Urza's Mime, Priest of Titania, Preordain. You, you kind of understand, even Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt is a classic card that was reprinted to Oblivion. And you're going to see another card on this, which is Counterspell. Those two cards, I have such a huge collection for of, and now they're two bucks. That is amazing. That is truly something amazing that Lightning Bolt, a card that's been reprinted in common in multiple standard sets, including the recent one, on a core set, can still be a $2 card. And they sell like hotcakes. And the same with Counterspell, a card that printed so many times is over a dollar. You really have to thank the popper format for this. And I don't think it's a aberration. I think this is the real price. Now, of course, the big danger here, as with any common, is it will be reprinted. As soon as the common is reprinted, you're looking at a drop of maybe 50, 75% of its value pretty much overnight as soon as the reprint is announced. Remember, it's not the reprint itself. It's the announcement of the reprint that tanks the price the most. And then it has some recovery time. I think it's amazing and I love it. Um, MTG Finance is a lot more fun for me right now. I don't, I honestly didn't like the sharking era. I didn't think that was a great era for anybody. Because even though you're good at quote MTG Finance, you kind of came out as, as a scum guy, bag. The speculation era, I think a lot of people don't understand how hard it is. So let me tell you about Snow Cover Mountain. If you buy one of those pre-constructed decks and it came in... One of the pre-constructed decks I purchased had... It was like 24 Snow Cover Islands and like 12 Snow Cover Islands and 12 Snow Covered Swamps. My gosh, for 10 bucks... Like you quadruple your money from just the lands. Not even quadruple, like. No, okay, five times. You have 5x return on just the lands and nothing else. I mean, man, if you could go back to Ice Age, I would buy those. That I would just buy, buy, buy. I would just not stop. But obviously, that's hindsight. Oh, what was I talking about? Um, hmm, I forgot what I was talking about. I guess, oh yeah, if you were a shark back in the era and people thought you were really cool, you would be kind of a scumbag. Because that's, what do you value this at? When you ask that question, you're hoping that the card that they, that they should say $10 is valued at $2. Then you take out the binder and you put it in a pile. Then you continue to do this for the whole binder, waiting for mistake after mistake from your trade quote partner. And then you just hose them. That was what MTG Finance was in the beginning. Then it became buying a card. Oh, buying a card. Small note about this. It's really hard to buy a card out. Like really, really hard. There's just too many vendors and they keep popping up 
and every time they pop up, it's slightly more expensive. So you're actually, I mean, the way that you have to do it is you kind of have to do it slowly. Hopefully a card doesn't spike overnight. It's really difficult to buy a card spiking overnight because you have people who don't send it to you. Oh, I overordered, and maybe they did. Crystal Commerce apparently is a terrible system. I love it. I love this era of MTG Finance because it's going to reward people who actually really enjoy magic, and that's people of bulk. If you want to enjoy magic, like magic for magic's sake, then you will buy bulk because you can play with cards you played with. And that's the appeal to Popper to me in EDH is cards that like have no utility. I can still put them in my deck. It's not going to be great. It's not optimized. But none of my play group plays like that, right? So every one of my play group, I, I will be honest, we all me play counter spells. We each have like one win condition. But we're holding up count. I mean, that's what we like to do. We just like countering other counter spells and countering those counter spells. Anyway, these are the cards that are quite valuable. And if you have the, I'll just keep talking until the next slide. If you have these cards, take them out. Like muddle the mixture, a dollar. Yeah, spore frog from a set that like really doesn't even have any rares over a dollar. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, Counterspell, $1.60. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, what do we have? Logic Knot is $1.75. Ponder, and this is good stuff. I mean, I think this is really good stuff. Uh, Essence Warren is not here, but that's also like a dollar too. Oh, that Distant Melody card. Okay, let me talk about that Distant Melody card. So Distant Melody and Stony Brook, whatever. I can't read it right now. I own lots of them. Just lots of them because I own a ton of Morning Tide. I don't know how I came above about because um, I was buying collections from my friends and then I would sell the more higher value cards, which always tend to be the rares and the mythics. Ugh, I, I still don't want to say mythics because back then when I was buying collection, we didn't actually have mythics. So just the rares. And then I would sell them and then I would. The bulk is just really hard to move. If you ever try to move bulk, the worst case scenario is if you don't, you have to call ahead of time. And even if you call ahead of time, it's not guaranteed it'll take your bulk. So you pay $10 for parking at GP Houston, you pile your bulk there, and then you figure out the guy doesn't want to buy bulk anymore. And now you have a bunch of bulk and no one wants to take it. And now you have to like carry it out back to your car in your parking lot, which is like, 10, 15 minutes away in the hot summer. No, no. Anyway, Dark Ritual is doing pretty well. I mean, I love this stuff. I mean, it's so fascinating that you look at um, crop rotation and it's $1.55 and you look at Rancor and it's $1.44 and these Rancor has been reprinted literally into Oblivion. Dark Ritual, I mean, wow, that card's been reprinted into Oblivion as well. But even something like Distant Melody, oh, hey, hey, that Hyena, Hyena Umbrum, I have a ton of those too. What's that, Charge of Alora was the original set? Anyway, I need to go look. It's a lot of fun too. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, bye guys.